Conservative leader Pierre Polyev is pushing for a first minister's meeting on the carbon tax and he wants it to happen on live television. The demand is included in a non-binding conservative motion that dominated the debate in the House today. Six premiers, including the Liberal Premier of Newfoundland and Labrador, have asked for a meeting. Will he agree to a televised carbon tax conference if he's so sure of himself on this issue? We did sit down with the premiers eight years ago and established the pan-Canadian framework on climate change that both puts a price on pollution and puts more money back in the pockets out of eight of ten Canadian families. On April 15th, people will see in their bank accounts the Canada carbon rebate. Okay, so do voters want to watch the Prime Minister do that with the Premiers on television, or do they just want to get those carbon rebate checks that are going to appear in the mailbox next week? The Power Panel is with me. Emily Nicola, Michelle Cadario, Francoise Boivin, and Kate Harrison. Look at me dating myself, suggesting a check's going to end up in a mailbox, as opposed to just be direct <laughs> deposited. Uh, 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 Kate, uh, Pierre Polyev keeps finding creative and new ways to try to push the uh, the, the, the emergency, as they call it, of the carbon tax uh, front and center. But you know who else suggested the prime minister should do this and televise it is Bruce Anderson, who's no fan of Pierre Polyev, but he thinks this wouldn't be a, a bad thing uh, for, for, the, for the prime minister to do to stare down some of his critics right now. What, what do you think of this? Uh, yeah, it's called today's episode of Selective Federalism, and it's where uh, he can bring everybody to the table and talk about housing and health care and all the things that he wants to fund in the provinces, but, uh, you know, avoid a, a carbon tax debate. I, I think a lot of liberals are suggesting that, you know, the what the prime minister needs to do right now is extol the virtues of a consumer price on carbon. Um, and so they've, they've already basically been pot committed to this policy for the last, um, you know, eight years. Uh, and a lot of liberals who believe really strongly in it d want to double down and say, yeah, let's challenge the premiers uh, in a live forum and make clear that their plans are not as good as our own. So uh, for the real believers in that, I, I can see them wanting to endorse a, a public and, and televised debate. Uh, I think any day that we're talking about the carbon tax, televised or not, is not a good day for the prime minister because mm -hmm. public opinion has turned on this issue. So you can understand his reluctance. But uh, despite my, you know, kind of glib uh, commentary at the outset, uh, it really is challenging for the prime minister to turn down something like this, a meeting with the premiers on this topic, when he is also talking about working with the provinces on the major housing deals uh, that he needs to initiate as part of the budget. So how he's going to have those conversations and those negotiations while avoiding conversation about the carbon tax kind of feels like we're, you know, driving towards a bit of an inevitable mm. debate, whether or not it happens on TV. Michelle, I, I guess they, they'll just delegate it to the ministers as a way to get around it, right? I, I don't know, but like you you worked for a prime minister who did this uh, on health care, right? Paul Martin did this, uh, what, mm -hmm. uh, 20 years ago or so? Yeah. Different kind of issue, you know, uh, mutual self-interest and finding a, a solution there as opposed to fundamental disagreement on, on how to deal with this. Uh, would you would would you recommend that Justin Trudeau did what Paul Martin did uh, on health? Well, let's be clear. I also worked for a premier, Christy Clark, who, uh, you right. know, they, when they we demanded a... Um, a uh, first minister's meeting that Stephen Harper uh, ignored for 10 years uh, uh, throughout his entire time to discuss health care. So uh, it's not the first time, let's just say. And, um, you know, when you're on the side of the provinces, it's always great because you get to you're essentially you get to team up um, against the one person. Uh, it happens to be the one person with the checkbook. Um, so, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, it is what it is. I'm not I'm not kind of uh, I'm kind of with Bruce on this. I think that um, having a little bit more of an informed debate and having PowerPoints and having slides and if it, for anybody who wants to tune in to actually understand better what the carbon situation is, um, you know, it's a, a little bit of irony that it was uh, that what is it, the um, warmest time that um, human beings have ever inhabited the earth um, right now. Uh, and uh, and uh, yet we're talking about, you know, trying to reduce how, how all our efforts on what we're doing on carbon. And all this time, you know, he's got his whole day to talk about it. But Pierre Polyev, to my, to, from what I've seen, didn't seem to use any of those hours to mention what he might do to make up that delta. Mm -hmm. um, you know, is he just going to let the fires burn? What is his solution? Uh, Francois, PowerPoints and slides make great TV, as I'm sure everybody knows. <laughs> but, you know, uh, you know Michelle, Michelle's not wrong. The Conservatives have not put out uh, an alternative option. Kate is not wrong that 
jurisdiction is politically very convenient, depending on who is interested in, in, in respecting mm -hmm. it or not respecting it in this country. Um, but what, what are the merits of this? I, I mean, Justin Trudeau makes the point. They, they hashed this out in 2016 in Vancouver and here in Ottawa when they got assigned. A lot has changed since then, including all the faces at the table, pretty much, except for his. Where do you think this should go? Well, I think it's a bit of a posturing. I, I mean, sometimes I wonder where Poiliev would be if he didn't have the carbon tax to hammer on and how long it will take the Canadian public to realize that even if we cut it, shred it, remove it from every jurisdiction, it's still going to be a lack of, of housing. There's still going to be so many things. I'm still not sure that uh, inflation will not be pretty close to what it is right now. So how long it will take? So it, it just makes for good politics inside the House of Commons. It's something, like Kate said, it, 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 every time they talk carbon tax, it might not be a super good day for the prime minister, but more and more, especially now that he could say, hey, next week on the 15th, you'll get some money. Eight out of 10 people. You see, I learned it well since now they've been repeating it often that eight out of uh, 10 families will receive more money than uh, the, it costs uh, them uh, to, uh, to pay carbon tax. So all that being said, I don't think we're advancing the, 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 the file on environment. As for the conference, I love provincial federal conferences. <laughs> I used to live for those when I was in law school. I mean, that was so amazing. And now everybody is so afraid to even open up any file in case it would open up bigger files. And the, the most guilty party on that front is the federal who's been, and I know your viewers don't like it, but the federal's been inside provincial jurisdiction. So bring on a federal provincial conference and you will see a lot of premiers coming with more than the carbon tax because most of them, they humor Pierre Poilievre, but at the same time, this is the least of their problem. It's way more the housing and, and, and health and, and education and so many other things. So bring on a nice conference. I don't think it will happen because no. this government doesn't even want to open the idea of removing the... Uh, swearing in to the oath to the king in case it would open up the constitution. So if you think they'll open it up for, for other things, um, you'd be surprised. But this is posturing, and I'm just wondering how long it will take Canadians to realize this is such a an empty, empty debate that does nothing for environment. So, Emily, though, is there any political value in the government doing this, sort of calling the bluff here and doing it? They've got the scientific consensus uh, and economic consensus on their side and the Supreme Court in terms of their jurisdiction going up against the politics on the other side, right, which, which is uh, maybe the more relevant force uh, at this point in time in 2024. But is it worth it to try to change the argument in a different arena? Oh, I'm not hearing Emily. Oh, Emily, you may be muted. See, this Can you is, hear me now? Okay. If they're going to do this with the first ministers, they got to be in person because we can't have this happen. We'll blame <laughs> yes. All right. Go ahead. Emily. Yes. Sorry, sorry about that. Yep. Uh, yes, it is worth it. Uh, it is worth having a, a conversation change from politics uh, to policy. But this is exactly what uh, the opposite of what uh, a public uh, private first ministers meeting would do. Mm -hmm. We've seen, for example, question period, how it is the most theatrical, therefore not policy and all politics related aspect of the work that's done at the House of Commons. Why? Because it's public. And since social media have invaded, uh, c c you know, MPs um, commission and, and, and hearings and committees, we've seen the impact that it has had on the quality of our public debates. And so if we were to not be able to have conversations between uh, premiers and the prime minister that isn't in front of the public, uh, basically it would be I don't want to say the end of federalism necessarily, but it would be a mess, uh, given how important it is uh, for our leaders to have space where it's not about ego, mm -hmm. uh, it's not about uh, posturing, but it's it is about having actual conversations. I, you know, if François Legault and Justin Trudeau were not able to talk privately, um, the the posturing of of nationalism and regionalism 
would be so high that you would not be able to make sense of the just the most common sense policies and people would not be able to put some water in their wine and, and compromise and, 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 and then pu- communicate publicly without, without losing face. And so I'm all for transparency. At the same time, I do want us to realize just the impact that theatrics already have on our public debate now that there is more live television than ever and there's social media and everybody's looking for clips when they're asking questions to their colleagues instead of looking for the truth. And so if we're going more, uh, doing more of that, I'm not sure it's going to help climate, but I don't think it's going to help federalism in general either. Right. So, so Kate, you know, the, the searching for clips and, and, and the jurisdictional issues like blame doesn't respect jurisdictions. And if you watch question period, as Emily has pointed out, like every everything is Justin Trudeau's fault. If you if you listen to the central argument in question, so that whether it's a provincial issue, a municipal issue, anything that makes life difficult in Canada is his fault. So they seem to be pushing back as well on those things, trying to trample jurisdiction a little bit with with, with the with the um, with the budget rollout and the policies they're putting out there. Because if you're going to get hammered for it, you may as well try to have a role in fixing it. Right? Politically, it kind of makes sense. Yeah, and I'm going to argue a little bit about what I said at the outset. I still think having this is probably a bad idea. But on the flip side, if you do believe that contrast is the way that you that you win campaigns, this is actually a unique opportunity to have some contrast and create some differentiation with the premiers. What I observe in looking at all the provinces right now is, generally speaking, incumbent governments that have been there for a long time are in trouble. Um, mm-hmm. Justin Trudeau has at least another 18 months uh, where he might have some contrast to draw with the White House, uh, depending on how things go in November. And he might have an opportunity to draw some contrast um, with the premiers if they are trying to have it both ways on the housing fund and a couple of other things that he's looking at funding. So I still think net-net, we're talking about the carbon tax, it's a yeah. bad day for the Liberals. But if they really are focused on creating that contrast with Polyev, creating some distance from the NDP, kind of treating them as a bit of a secondary actor, not worth paying attention to, then there is something to be said for doubling down on this, on the virtues of a carbon tax, why it's being done, why it's the right path, and making the premiers out to be the ones that are saying, no, no, we we can't do anything. So it, it is an option to draw that contrast. So, but, but Michelle, he's not running against the premiers, though it may feel like it some days. Uh, he, he, needs to, he needs to make that clear contrast with Pierre Polyev. So... I don't know. Do you throw the invitation back saying, OK, I'll do this, but you got to come and present your climate plan and show us what you're going to do? I, I, I don't know. This seems to be a, a debate that has been about largely symbolic sort of gestures and challenges rather than a debate about solutions. Well, you know, I don't know if it's a debate or about a series of allegations from the opposition, but you know, the prime minister did put out a letter to all the premiers inviting all of their ideas about what they would do if they wanted to you know, instead of have the carbon tax, what would they do to make up that delta? And, you know, to my knowledge, nothing's come in. Not not a single thing. You know, people put forward what their own plan is, what they're doing currently, and, and all the great contributions. And I'm not saying they're not working hard because the provinces are. But no one has brought forward something that's actually going to make up that loss um, and to put us towards our target. Nor has anyone said, let's just forget about the target. And, you know, be about our merry way and, and do whatever it takes. So, you know, and it's the same challenge to Pierre Polyev. You know, right now, yes, he has a chorus of, minister, of, of premiers who seem to be willing participants in this, uh, this, this charade. But he, too, is putting nothing forward. Um, and, uh, you know, so in that way, it's an opportunity, you know, and, I, you know, build the agenda around all the different ideas from the premiers. It's a blank agenda. It'll be a fast day. Okay, uh, we're out of time, but I want to thank you all for joining me for this nationally televised conversation uh, about the carbon tax. So I always appreciate it. Emily Nicola, Michelle Cadario, Francoise Bovent, and Kate Harrison. Thanks so much, gang. See you next week.